Well, hello again to all the boys and girls out there in YouTube land watching. John and Ellie of Georgia Beer Reviews back at you today with a product or a whiskey review. Uh, we are looking at the Heaven Hill Quality House Old Style Bourbon. Oh, and joining me is the one, the only, Ronald J. Terry of Louisiana Beer Reviews. So I don't really know much about this product. Um, we usually don't get a lot of Heaven Hill brands around here, so I was really surprised when I saw this. It was $10.99 for the glass liter bottle, so I thought that was a pretty good deal. I say so. Aged for 36 months. I didn't see the age statement initially, but Ron caught it. Uh, so 36-month age statement on it. Which is one year longer than it's required. It's only required to be aged two years for straight bourbon. For straight bourbon, yeah, which I did not know that until watching one of your educational videos on bourbon that's the law <laughs> all right but interestingly yeah, bourbon no. has no age statement requirement no. i'm sorry bourbon has no age requirement straight bourbon has an age requirement see if you're very careful and you go to the store that's enough if you're very careful and you go to these stores you'll you look in the bourbon section you'll see straight bourbon then you'll see blended bourbon, you know, a few, not many, right. not many. But then you'll also see something called just bourbon. Mm -hmm. It'll just say bourbon. And uh, that has no minimum age requirement. You could age it for, I guess, theoretically, a week. It'd be clear. It's like that uh, redemption line. They make a bourbon, they make a, a rye, and they're all only aged for like, Maybe twelve months or something. Oh, well, they don't. None of them say straight bourbon. Right. They just say bourbon. Right. That's what I'm saying. So they're not right. to be a straight bourbon. It's got to be two years. But anything less than that, you could still call bourbon. As long as it follows the other two requirements. Right. It has to be made. Well, three requirements. It has to be made in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Any state doesn't have to be Kentucky. It has to be aged in new, never before used charred oak barrel. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be white oak. That's the preferred. It could be any kind of. Which is why early times is not technically a bourbon, even though because it's aged and because it's aged and once run, barrels. yeah. But in some countries, it is labeled as a bourbon because they don't could, have the laws that we have here, right? Or they're selling a different thing over there. Could well, you yeah. See? Just like have you in Georgia encountered early times bottled in bond? I have not. I don't think we can get that. Here. Get that in Louisiana, really? Uh, so anyway, uh, real fast, so. Age at least, uh, or what were we saying? Just bourbon? Oh, yeah. Bur yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, United States has to be at least 51% corn. The other 49% doesn't matter. It could be any grain. And it has to be uh, aged in the, used, uh, the new barrels. The new barrels. Beyond that, it doesn't matter. Hmm. No other rules. Okay. Sorry to. Which a lot of people don't know, and they think bourbon is like an indication of quality, but not necessarily. <laughs> no. And I was just watching a video from Europe, in England, I think. And the guy was saying, well, it's a bourbon, so it has to be at least four years. Straight bourbon. I was saying, that's a mistake. Mm -hmm. It's not four years. Okay, sorry to... No, not at all. Okay. Nice alcohol legs already on mine. Just yeah. Really nice alcohol legs. You got a lot of faith to let me hold this Glencairn glass, because I have a bad <laughs> habit. know your history with the Glencairn glasses. You want to break a glass? Let me hold it. <laughs> it's swishy, watery... Which is good. I think it's got a lot of liveliness. And um, you say copper, like a light. Yes, uh, like I would say or amber. Or amber. It's a family-owned company, by the way, folks. Family. See, this is why I do whiskey reviews with Ron Terrio any chance I get because he knows so much more about this than I do. It smells it smells like a pretty good bourbon. I got more free time than him, so I read about <laughs> these things. Um, it um, it's a family-owned company. And the family that owns it is called the Shapiro family. That's their name, Shapiro, hmm. by the way. It smells pretty good for cheap bourbon. It's got some nice caramel, toffee. Oh, and one more thing. Did you know that their distillery masters are the Bean family? No, I want to say I've heard that before probably from watching one That's the name of the people. That's the last name of the people that are distillery masters that haven't held the Beam family. Okay, no, I don't know. The distillery masters for Jim Beam is the No family. The No family. N-O-E. Okay. Huh. But they're all related because, you know, sometimes people, 
you know, the, the, the daughter gets married and yeah, and then she they using their name, the married right. name. So yeah. Anyway, all right. Smells good. Wood, charred oak. A lot of oak, a little light caramel in the background. Yes. getting a ton with it but a little vanilla right a little corn a little you see my complaint about bourbon is that i always say it tastes like it smells like corn grits right i don't know if you eat grits a lot sometimes yeah we are in the south after all so you said sometimes i said a lot a lot no okay. i wouldn't say a lot i a lot of times i don't even eat breakfast i get up go to work and i oh, just eat a big no lunch. It smells yeah it smells good though but yeah the corn's definitely there as well Sort of a clean aroma. They're talking about the limestone water. It smells really good, yeah, so give it a try. Cheers, folks. <clears throat> mm. It's pleasant. Mellow. Grits. Yeah. Pleasant corn grits. A um, little light char. Honestly, if you're a big time bourbon guy and you're like, well, I was drinking some Blanton's. Uh, yeah, gold that I bought at the, at the airport in Hong Kong. Uh, yeah, this is really not going to be like that because ten ninety nine a liter, and you're buying you know two ninety nine for the Blanton's gold at the at the you know liquor store at the airport in Hong uh -huh. Kong. It's probably not going to be the same. Experience. Right, this might not cut it for uh, you know your really well established whiskey drinker, but. But for me, if you it just, works. <laughs> yeah, if you're just like a person that will enjoy a value priced, mm -hmm. everyday straight bourbon whiskey with not a lot of age, eh, if you're one of those ancient age people, I don't know if you ever had an ancient age. Mm -hmm. We did an examination on your channel years ago. That's right. I thought you had. I thought you had. You know, I don't know if you're picking up on this, but a little cinnamon. On, okay. the, on the nose now after I took that first sip. There is a little spiciness. Yes. I'm, I'm like big red. <laughs> That's what I'm getting. No cinnamon is added, by the way. <laughs> Highly illegal to add flavoring or coloring to bourbon. If you get a Canadian whiskey or a scotch, you'll say, look at the rich amber color. Yeah. Yeah, and that amber color is probably coming from caramel added. In these bourbons, it's coming from the wood only. Mm -hmm. What color is bourbon when it goes in the barrel? Clear. We are. This is what color it is when it's coming out the barrel after three years. So a lot of, a lot of stuff happening in that barrel. I, one of the reasons I love bourbon so much, it's my favorite, you know, type of whiskey. Oh yeah. Um, is because of the 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 char, the oak presence that you're getting yeah. from the char. I like barrels. that part of it. Uh, and I don't mind the corn so much. I think it. You you're not as big into the corn as I am with the bourbons, but yeah. I, I really do like that corn grits type I of thing. I get irritated with it because I eat a lot of grits. Like I'll eat Quaker grits right. in the morning in, in the morning for breakfast. So and then and I'll drink this and I'll say, Oh you know, it tastes like grits, you know, it tastes like grits. So I guess if people live in New York or Connecticut or Oregon, they're probably not eating grits in the morning. Right. Or in Hong Kong or Wales, you know. <laughs> so they they don't have that overexposure to pulverized corn, mm -hmm. but it may appeal more. Yeah, I'm not anti bourbon. You know, you know that from my mm -hmm. channel. Just not my favorite. <sighs> Slight but, burn going down. It's not. Yeah. I mean, it's smooth for the most part, but yeah, you definitely get a little bit of that burn on the little burn. finish. I like, it. Um, I like it. I'm not really so good at giving, you know, number ratings for whiskey but i oh, was right you never even officially started doing that I, well i think i finally started the last few but usually i just give oh. it like a straight number and i think that's probably what i'm going to do for this because i don't feel qualified to give it specific a specific number oh, i'm right. just going to say it's an a for a budget bourbon i think it's a, it's an a budget product i don't know why you'd have to be qualified you just <laughs> taste it and tell what you think you know tell people what you think um, in that case i give it a 93 <laughs> But it's an A. It's an it's an A whiskey. A bird. My friend Paul that used to do the hangouts with us, mm. but he couldn't anymore because children kept climbing all over him and interrupting. <laughs> but he said, um, he was telling me on the phone, why do you have to be an expert to give a beer a score? Just tell what you think about the beer. Right. Then you can try another one, and then pretty soon you have so many, then you kind of like an expert. Right. Well, that's the way I see it. I feel like I haven't had enough whiskeys to, you know what I mean? But like beer, 
I have, there's, yeah. no, there's no shortage of, of different beers that I've tried, so I have no problem giving yeah. a very specific yeah. rating for a beer. But whiskey, my, yeah, my exposure, I'm, I'm an amateur too. Right? Very limited compared to beer. I'm very, I'm a novice basically. Yeah. I'm just getting. But you're you getting into it a lot more lately. You've had, yeah, I mean, a lot more of the budget brands at least. So this this is right up your alley because you've had a lot of the other comparable right. budget bourbons. So you would be very qualified to give this. Of course, Johnny Blue Label wouldn't exactly fit the. Budget, no, but that's like budget profile. the only product that you've bought that's like. Really top of the line when it comes to any whiskey. Because right, really usually you buy the yeah, but I did buy know, the middle Re- of the road. I did buy the Chivas Regal and right. I did buy the Buchanan's. Mm-hmm. And uh, my next Buchanan's on the to buy list is the Master. Oh, that's not eight ninety nine. You know, no. <laughs> um, and then the next one is the Buchanan's eighteen year, mm. which Walmart has for a special low price of eighty nine ninety nine. Oh, but anyway, hmm. that's a different story. <laughs> So you agree, an A for the, or what would you, you would, yeah, I mean, more interested to see what you would rate I, it, since you've had so many comparable yeah, bourbons. What he means is I'm a cheap, comparable whiskey. budget cheap bourbons. Whiskey. No, no, no. We get it. We, we, <laughs> caught, we were catching on at the beginning. Um, I like the charred oak, which is... More pronounced than you would expect from this, I think. Yeah, it's got a really significant. Makes you think they got that alligator char going on with it, <laughs> like that. Yeah, you know. it could be, and it, and and it could very well be. And then um, it's got a lot of just underlying wood, not char, but just wood, 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 and um, a slight vanilla. It's a simple product. Okay, I get that, but it's a very good simple product. We get the Heaven Hill blended. The Heaven Hill blended is trash compared to this. Okay, I'm sorry to say that on the air or, or recorded video, or whatever. I know because I bought a whole bottle and drank it. Okay, it's eighty mm. percent grain spirits. It's only twenty percent straight bourbon. Yeah. It's, compared to this, it's trash. You're asking for trouble with stuff like that, really. I mean, not necessarily asking for trouble, but I mean, honestly, what do you expect <laughs> for twenty percent? Uh, it's not terrible. On its own merits, it's not bad. My friend David poured it in some uh, CBS and he liked it. Some Canadian breakfast stuff. But compared to this, is what I'm saying, compared to this, it's trash. I mean, you just can't take blended bourbon and put it in there with straight and it's usually right. it's, yeah. you're just not going to match up. Right, yeah. If you were doing a side-by-side, it would be, it'd be a very clear winner. Yeah, so this one, it, it, it it's right there with the Barton... Um, V V S B very smooth bourbon. It's right there with the ancient age uh, from Sazerac. It's right there with um, uh, I can't think of any others that would be in that area. But that th- those type of things. So yes. Okay. All right. So you heard it here first, folks. Uh, an A budget bourbon, ten ninety nine here for a liter, which is a great value for the quality you're getting. If you can find it in your area, definitely worth checking out. That'll do it for this whiskey review, guys. Hope you're all having a good day. Until next time, everybody. Cheers. And wait, I don't think they heard it here first because mm-hmm. I think there are some other video reviews. For this well, time. no, I just meant, uh, well, yeah, you're right. Anyway, oh well. We drank too many curious. <laughs>